I hear Esme. <laughs> Strong start. <laughs> um, hi everyone. This is my week 37 and 38 pregnancy vlog. And um, this time I thought it would be really fun and sweet to bring um, this gentleman, my husband, <laughs> along for um, this vlog. And I had read some of your comments on past um, video logs asking for dad's perspective on pregnancy and just you know, how it um, is different this time than last time. So we'll talk a little bit about that. But um, I am very excited to now be full term. <laughs> and uh, we're anticipating every day this baby. Before I go back to work would be nice. <laughs> I'd like to see and hang Which out with the baby. happening very soon. Um, just so that we don't have to continue to say the baby, I thought this might be a really nice time to go ahead and let everybody know what we're having. Do you want to? You get to do it. No, you do it. You, I think you've earned uh, the platform. <laughs> this is your um, vlog. So we have a boy and a girl already, right? Wyatt Esme. Wyatt and Esme. And Are we doing the name reveal or just the gender? No, oh. just the gender. See, this is, I'm, already, I'm already blowing it. <laughs> Um, so we are having a... <laughs> <laughs> we're having a girl. We're having a girl! <laughs> um, we're so excited. And Wyatt really wanted to have another little sister. They both did. Everyone voted girl. You, Esme, Wyatt, and I just said healthy. I don't care. As I long as that like, baby's healthy, I'm happy with whatever. I just was... I think I was, like, excited to... That it was, you know, what Wyatt really wanted and Esme really wanted was to have another little sister. And they kept talking about it. And they were like, oh. And I, I kept saying, it could be a boy. It could be a boy. And Wyatt was like, nah, it's a girl. And then yeah, he called it early. He did. It was really cute. So. Um, it makes it easier because they hand me down clothes. You have so many great clothes for Esme. True. True. So our little girl is coming soon and we can't wait. Um, so we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and ask you some questions. Hit me. Dad. <laughs> um, so what, I mean, what some of the, um, folks from the community were asking is like, what is it like for dad during pregnancy? I mean, this is your third go, right? And this is a different one for sure, because we've been in the middle of some crazy times in our world. But um, what's it like for you when your wife's pregnant, other kids? What do you think about? Those are all great questions. Um, <laughs> I think it's got to be, that's a lot to unpack. I think it's got to be broken up into different um, answers, which is one, what is it like to, you know, um, have your wife pregnant um, during COVID? Uh, mm -hmm. And at first, you know, all we did is a ton of research, you know, you know, I think evidence of that is the EMA talks about like, what are the lasting ramifications of COVID, how it affects kids, how it affects pregnant women. And I remember all that information shifting, a lot. being very fluid, <laughs> especially early on, but knowing in a lot of cases that because it was a respiratory illness, um, where people had trouble breathing anyway, mm -hmm. that a lot of times, you know, having a, a baby um, pressing against the bottom of the lungs made it even more impossible. Mm -hmm. And just the idea that a lot of those pregnant moms uh, who got COVID, um, whose pulse ox numbers dropped, they'd have to go in and have a C-section early. Mm -hmm. and so I know that was a real concern for us, um, you know, through March and April and May. And, and now we're in a place where we still don't know the lasting ramifications of the illness, but if you got it, we would have a full term baby. True. Um, which is strangely um, less stressful. <laughs> I guess it's not strangely less stressful. I guess it's just less stressful. Yeah. I mean, we've been in full on lockdown mode. Yeah. For quite some time. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's different, but it's also. Um, 
than just us as a family. Which is, has its, you know, its <laughs> benefits. And I think that's my philosophy towards any kind of chaos and um, kind of unknown, which is that you do the best that you can with the circumstances that you have and you learn to make pivots um, and that kind of resilience and ability to shift you know, is, is what, um, especially for kids, um, is such a good tool set for, for their future. Um, so we're doing a lot of that with Wyatt and Esme, and that wasn't the question. The question was <laughs> about pregnancy. What's it like for you during pregnancy? I mean, the first three months are always hilarious <laughs> because you are like a, um, amoeba. I get so sick. You get so sick and you kind of just like float um around i mean but crazy is like the with wyatt you didn't leave you were next to it was you were cold all the time and you were next to the fireplace wrapped like around two akitas and i would <laughs> yeah. come home from work and be like you okay and you'd be like i don't feel good <laughs> and that was three straight months so yes. i was like this is insane mm -hmm. um but now like even with esme you still felt terrible but you had wyatt Mm -hmm. to take care of and now you have two crazy kids running around and and thank god we have uh our wonderful doula sanya and friend and part of our family um but you still have two businesses that you're running two kids a, fr a freaking new dog Thanks a lot, Eric. <laughs> uh, um <laughs> and it, there's kind of no time for for you to be sick so you were sick and functioning as like a, a full boss which was really interesting to see because you just bootstrapped it. You just kept going, which was oh, insane. Nausea is the worst, though. It really is. Yeah, as a person who <laughs> went on a boat, um, we went on a fishing boat with John Krasinski and Mandy Moore uh, when we were in Jamaica, and I got nauseous, and I was like, turn the boat around. Like, there was no power yeah. through for me. Like, I was like, you turn the boat around and take me back. Because Throwing I, up off the side of the boat is not fun. Right, but that's my point, is I think about that when I think about you being nauseous and being like, I made them turn the boat around. You okay. did it for three months. <laughs> like, I have no idea. It's so much respect for that. Um, what do you think your, like, highlight was this, um, this time around? When you have two animals who are so excited animals being our kids. Two kids that are so excited about having a little sister and um, talking about it all the time, kind of prepping them. What do you, what do you think this time around was your like highlight during the pregnancy? I think I have a lot of highlights. I think part of that is the forced intimacy of, of quarantine life, of COVID. And I think mm -hmm. that's, you know, taking the best that you can under circumstances. There was something really magical about um, going to the barn and the day we showed up and there was like, we walked in and the bed is like mice are running over the bed. <laughs> there's no air conditioning and there's no, uh, there's one bathroom and an outdoor shower. And the kids were like fighting over wanting to sleep in the barn with the mice. Yeah. <laughs> so I slept in the barn with the mice and you slept in the little... Air, con air conditioned, air stream. Yeah, but it's still an airstream. You were eight months pregnant, like, you know living in this 16 foot airstream and just like you would have um uh she would do this thing every morning where she would do bistro what'd you call it i called it my bistro where her and my <laughs> mom would like drink coffee together in the airstream like they'd open the windows in the airstream and they'd sit and they'd like, drink coffee and talk and i can't tell you how much joy that brought to me like we wouldn't have had that under different circumstances i would have been back mm -hmm. at work yeah. And I think those are the moments in we trade in which like, here's the chaos, here's the pivot, you know, here's us living under new circumstances. And the fact that you got to share that time, especially with my mom um, and the kids. I mean, I, you know, this is, um, this pregnancy has been, I think most of that is because of your ability to kind of navigate it. But this pregnancy has been amazing. I can tell you my, one of my favorite moments of pregnancy. Okay. I don't know if favorite's the right word. I think that may be shocking is that it was like a week and a half ago, okay. and you were, um, um, you're super pregnant. Uh -huh. like you're super pregnant, and we're on the beach, and- uh, I just probably show my belly. Okay, let's get that up there, because people don't know how pregnant you are. Well, I always show it during the video, and you're talking about how pregnant I am. I mean, so that, takes, well give them that takes up like three quarters of the frame. What? So that's a big, that's a big belly. 
baby it's girl. It's not small. Um, one of my favorite moments was you being like, I think I want a fourth. And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> you're, you're, you're super pregnant. Like normally everybody else is like, I want it out. I am done. Never again. Like, it was this is so the hot out too. We were like sweating on the beach. But... And you're like, I'm just, I, I love it so much. And I was just like completely at a loss. Like this is the part where you're supposed to be like, never again. And you're already like, let's do it again. I know, I was already thinking about the fact that she's... I blame Teresa Palmer, actually. (laughs) That's who I'm going to blame for this. It's not her fault. Not totally her fault. (laughs) Commune living with you. She does um, feel the same, though. How many do they have? Well, they have four. She's had three, and um, she wants more. That's insanity. (laughs) But that's no secret. Everybody knows that. Um... Yeah, that was a So that was a fun, fun moment. moment. But it was, I think it was a fun moment because it was like a window into your love of the process. Because I do see you like double over in pain like three times a day. You know, waddling That nerve back I f- told you guys about, it's... Yeah, it's like someone hit her with a cattle prod and she goes, ha! And then she like leans <laughs> over something where she's in extreme pain. But, you know, I think my process through pregnancy is just you know, taking the cues from you and how you're processing it. And I think because you're so at peace and in tune with your body um, and in love with, I think, the miracle of the whole thing, that my my job is easy. Well, he's he says I'm at peace and in tune with my body. And that there's definitely those moments. But I also have moments of fear that I talk to you guys about. But, you know... What's nice is having a partner who will hear me out when I say, okay, I'm having this moment where I'm like, am I going to be okay? Is baby going to be okay? And I look at him and I say that, and I just need him to say... Positively. Absolutely. Everything's going to be fine. And I think it's just normal. If you say those things out loud, it's going to make you feel better. Because it's so normal to like have those thoughts and those feelings and you know especially with everything that's been going on in the world like it just makes little things heavier and so you know it's it makes your processing different and um I'm very visual so I think about what our experience is going to be when we leave here and we go to to the hospital and you know I've been told that the hospital that we're birthing at um they check you or they do like a COVID test when you get there and then you have to labor in a mask. And so I'm just like envisioning all that, picturing all that. And it just seems like, ugh, like not, you know, not, not what I'm wanting to envision. I want to see people's faces and connect with people. And I just, I'm one of those people that when I'm in birth, I'm anybody that comes into my wake, I utilize them, right? I'm grabbing onto folks and like, hanging off of doors and humans and (laughs) and it's no quiet alone moment. I enjoy all of the people that are in the room and, and use their energy. So I'm like, everyone's going to be masked. I'm not even going to be able to tell what anyone's expression is. And you don't need it. True. You don't need it. True. And that's what, you know, that's part of having a partner who is so supportive Um, Speaking of which, during um, birth, Eric is always very amazing and attentive. Um, Is there anything that you want to talk about (laughs) or say about birth or what you're looking forward to? Or I mean, I know we just like can't wait to have this baby in our arms and hope that she comes today in the next few hours. (laughs) But um, is there anything... You know, you, there's probably going to be some mamas out there that are new mamas. This will be their first birth that might see this. And is there anything that you can relay as a partner, um, you know, for other dads out there, other partners out there? That's another big question. <laughs> um, I think that the most important thing for moms to know is that you've been doing this for tens of thousands of years yes and you can do it and you're going to be great and then the moment and some people birth in like a field some people birth in a field some people <laughs> birth in the back of a uber i just saw that video oh my gosh that use was... your magic mama use your magic mama <laughs> and i think so that, good. and i think that yeah that it's just that they're 
the system around you has changed, but the power hasn't. And that's mm -hmm. from you, that's from inside of you. And you just trust that and embrace that. And that's where like circumstances and logistics and everything that's surrounding you, that stuff all washes away and you just concentrate on the fact that you know how to do this and your body knows how to do this for mm -hmm. generations before you, they've been doing it. And it's gonna be beautiful. And I think my favorite moment is always grab your baby mama. Is that when a baby starts to come out and you just... That's my favorite moment too. Grab that baby. Grab your baby mama. I'm like waiting for you to tell me the head's out, the shoulders are out. And then I'm like, okay, it's a home run at this point. Um, it makes me feel so good. And for dads... Wow. That's a big question. I think it's just about embracing all of it, um, the spectrum of it, because it is, you know, the process is for us as a witness. I know that you can feel kind of powerless within that, but don't let that feeling of powerlessness affect how you perform as a partner, if that tracks. You just Sometimes you're just there to support and sometimes it's just there enough to, to hold, you know, your partner's hand and, and say those words that you're, you're going to be great and you're, and you're doing great. Um, That's really sweet. And also, I think I just read something um, really beautiful the other day and it was talking about, you know, just how when a baby is born, a mother is born. But yeah. also a father's born. I mean, the moment that baby's handed over into your arms, you're like, you know, or partner is born. The moment that that partner has the baby in their arms, it's like, that's your baby. Yeah, for sure. I, the yeah. transformational power of the actual birth and like refiltering how we look at the people that we love. Like the way that I viewed my mom after being, you know, becoming a dad. The way I viewed mm -hmm. my dad. The way I looked at you and just watching you through that process. Especially why? Because it was such a hectic, crazy birth. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the that first moment. And every dad has to do it. Like, you can't go golfing yet. You have to do skin to skin. Because I think that there's... <laughs> Something. You can't go golfing yet. It's just, there's some dads are like, cool, got the baby, I'm out of here, I'm gonna go golfing now. <laughs> like, you're missing out on a wonderful opportunity. And I think it sounds, you know, like the, the hippie idea of skin to skin, but there's magic in that and you have to do it. I think mom is obviously to do it immediately. But I think dad, especially early on, I think it's really important to put that baby on your chest. And you know me, I always take my shirt off and put that baby on my chest, skin to skin. Why do you have a shirt on? I'm shocked you have one on right now. <laughs> you know, I'm missing the sleeves, so it's close I mean, enough. I've been so, you know, working out so much, so much during this pregnancy. <laughs> yeah, I gotta go back to work on Thursday. Thanks a lot, Bowflex. <laughs> oh, this is a shout out for Bowflex. <laughs> Hashtag. I see those things everywhere. <laughs> um, yeah, there is a lot. But I'm, I like, think... I'm like, does it go below five pounds? Because that's what I need. <laughs> below five? Yeah. Yeah. Can we just turn that dial down to like a 2.5? Don't miss out on that opportunity <laughs> to go chest to chest with that baby. I don't... It's that, it's, that is a magical moment. And I think that um, as much as it taps into something with you as a dad... I think it's also taps into something within that baby of understanding like where home is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially early on when we feel like, you know, dads are so worthless for like the first, you know, I don't know, six months. <laughs> That's not true. I mean, but it's like we change diapers, but that baby just wants you. There's nothing that like, right. I, I do everything I can, but as the baby grows, the role that we participate in actively with the child becomes Gross. very different. Yes. But for, for early on. Our kids on, are really excited about skin to skin too. Oh, that's going to be the greatest. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to start crying thinking about it. I know. It's one of my favorite moments is when Wyatt held Esme for the first time. And I was just oh. like, some Lion King shit. I don't know what that was. <laughs> I know. Well, actually, that's what I was saying the other day is that it's going to be like the Lion King with, you know, this lockdown and, and pandemic is we're going to have to have people do a drive by and I'll just hold the baby up and be like, she's here. <laughs> just 
hold the baby over the street. La, yeah, it's gonna be great. Just take a picture of it and send it. <laughs> that's true. Save on gas. Yeah. Um, well, is that it? You that's know, she it. Has a, she has a cheat sheet over here. You know, like musicians have like their song list. Well, I wanted to make sure that I wrote Full down. Full team gender reveal. Uh, come on, come on. What else does it say on there? What other questions do you have? No, I just wanted to make sure. Are these sure. supposed to be 20 minutes? Um, yeah, I break them up into two videos if they go past 20. He watches them. All of my videos is what this means. I'm the number one commenter <laughs> on there. I always comment. Yeah, you do. Um, yes, I wrote out, I wanted to make sure all the questions that you guys had when you were asking if dad could come on um, was on here. So I think we pretty much hit most I'm of I'm sure that. I will think of something as soon as we hit. <laughs> Stop. The only the last thing I'm gonna say is that um, some people were curious if I was already having contractions, and um, I guess this is sort of a typical thing for me where um, the last couple weeks of pregnancy I have a lot of evening contractions, and it kind of psychs me out a little bit. I'm like, I'm like, ooh, I'm having contractions, things are happening, maybe we'll go to bed tonight, and then I wake up in the morning and I look over and I'm like, I'm still here. <laughs> Either way, you're still here. <laughs> well, I would have woken you up in the middle of the night. I just like wake up and I'm like, oh yeah, we were both sleeping. Maybe. I look over and, and I see baby. you like flopping around, like rubbing your belly and then your face and your belly, and I was like, is this some sort of ritual is she asleep <laughs> no i'm just in pain and then esme <laughs> burrows the fact that this girl, esme is sleeping between us still and she does like the the windmill where she flops around and then at one mm -hmm. point she had her head like over me and her was just kicking <laughs> you in the face and i was like she what? did kick me in the face last night i know that's what i was referring to yeah that was intense i was actually asleep and i had doubled up my pillows so i have like my beautiful holy lamb organics uh pregnancy pillow that I'm, I'm just completely and totally in love with. I don't think I'll ever sleep with anything else. I'm just going to be like this um, between us. And I have uh, another pillow even stacked on top of it so that it helps separate my, my hips just kill me during this pregnancy. They're like aching at night. If anybody has any tips, please leave, leave them below in the comments because so far the two pillow is starting to help me. Um, and then just asking the kids if they'll like rub their elbows into my hips. <laughs> I picked up some tips from Sonia. Yes. I know all of the, the the doula tips. The doula moves. Shaking the apples. Which is exactly what it sounds like. That's right, and it feels great. And That's you right. need it. <laughs> Ladies, tell your gentlemen you want them to shake your apples. To shake your apples, please. <laughs> and if they look at you like then and be like, the yes, answer is yes. That's correct. You're my doodla. Thank you. My dadla. The doula? The dadla? I'm indifferent. Doodla. <laughs> Just the guy shaking your apple. Um, so, okay, so we'll be, or Can I bring I'll Aspen be back. In to say hi? I mean, if you really want to. Do you guys want to see the puppy? She's so cute. <laughs> Come here. Um, I'll be back with you again next week at 39 weeks, unless the baby comes sooner. Baby girl. Oh, and then our baby girl that is here. Is that Is that happening? If you want to see her. <laughs> see, I'm going to have a baby. And Eric needed a baby too. <laughs> Who's a baby? Who's a baby girl? Who's a baby girl? Okay. I mean. Okay. Okay. Can you even handle that? Watch your baby. She's so Watch yummy. Baby girl. Hi, Aspen. Who's your baby girl? Hello. Who's your baby girl? I was like hoping that her following me around the other day meant that I was going into labor, but it didn't happen. So. Hey guys. That's the dog. Yeah, just yeah. Fluffy. That's all. She knows you're pregnant. She's like a dolphin. <laughs> like a furry dolphin. She's a furry dolphin. Um. All right. Well. Thank you for coming on to well, the thank you for having me. And thank you to the community for something so wonderful. I think that, you know, life is difficult enough to navigate, but to do it without a community that you can bounce off ideas and philosophies and fears and hopes, I think is, is so important. And I think <laughs> that, that you guys have become that. Um, and I think with the 
you know, with the book and the release now in the U.S., like the amount of comfort and joy um, and community that that um, has come from these is remarkable. And I think you should be really proud of that. Thank you. And thank you guys. And we'll, I will see you next week if the baby's not here. So, <laughs> if she's not earth side yet. Oh, did you hear something? It's the kids. Okay. Look at that. It's a dire wolf. Bye, everyone. Do you want to say goodbye? Hold on, hold on. Okay. She. It's a she. Holly. <laughs> <laughs> I think most people have turned the video amazing. off at this point. No, they're still watching because no, we're like, no, no. it's too much to watch. I can't be. Oh, my God. Okay, bye. Bye.